Hey, David. Oh, Roman, it's you again. What do you want? Since you are here in our offices, could you please explain us the Tesla hunt that you did? Absolutely. I will show it to you. Just follow me around here. So, I will just go through it really quick that you know what is, what is going on. So, I found this piece of third-party software and I wanted to know how it works. I was reading through the source code and then I asked myself, like, how does authentication work here? So, you can see the source code here. And then I went in there and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So we have a few functions here and it takes like the username and the password and it, and then the raw credentials flow into the application. So where do they go? If you take a look here, you can see that there's a event that is like a sign in event where the credentials get exchanged for like a token. And now you wonder like where the token is going because the token is definitely a sensitive, sensitive asset here. So, I took a look at the code further below and I was like, oh, that's interesting. We have a save function that saves the tokens somewhere. So you can see whether the tokens get updated or newly created, it updates them in the, in the repo. So that, that's quite interesting. And now you see that what we discovered so far is tokens get inserted in the repo without encryption. Because I personally feel like you should encrypt tokens that contain sensitive data. And it didn't happen so far. So they only get stored into repo. And then I thought like repo has to be some kind of secure storage mechanism itself. Maybe some kind of wall that takes care of encryption and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to know what exactly repo is. So I was further reading through the source code. And I figured out that repo is only a PostgreSQL database. So repo is not some kind of secure storage mechanism and the tokens get stored next to all the other data in the database. So the token is not encrypted so far, which I think is, is quite an issue, but we get to why. And now we have some public dashboards of the software which display like charging statistics. And I mean charging statistics in themselves, I mean it's cool to know when the Tesla charged and where it charged. But the more interesting thing is that some of those dashboards are publicly accessible. So technically, um, you can, so th th that's another thing, a key fact that you have to know that certain that data is publicly accessible. And now you wonder like, what if we just could tell the API like, hey, I'm this public dashboard for displaying charging statistics, but instead hop a few tables away from the charging statistics to the table with the sensitive tokens. So, I mean, let's just try it. We are cybersecurity researchers, we do that. and. Then I was like, yeah, I was running the request, let's do it. And then I was really surprised because I thought like, hey, that's a secure piece of software, but I got the token out of there. And that token was basically like the keys to the kingdom because the Tesla API tokens are like digital car keys with like even extended remote control functionality. And you were able to do like stuff like querying the actual vehicle location, turning off the sentry mode, which is like the security mode of those Teslas, unlocking the doors and also starting keyless driving no matter if pin to drive was set, so you could even bypass pin to drive. And if you chain all of them together, you basically w could have stolen the Tesla. I didn't do that, but th that's the risk that you had here. And because it's so easy to exploit and the impact is that big on a car, the CFE got a score of 9.8 out of 10, which is critical. Amazing. Awesome, there we go.